Yes, you guys, what you're saying, I'm in the FC. This is Blue Lion CV, and today I've got another New Zealand video for you guys. Now, I'm going to focus on four stories for the day, and they are going to be on the latest surrounding Declan Rice. I'm going to be speaking about Kurt Zuma and his potential future to Paris in Japan. I'll be speaking about Luca Dinia interest, and to end things, I'll be speaking about competition goalkeepers that could be competing for that first team spot alongside Kepa for next season. So, we have a very interesting day for news. It's looking very good and if you guys want to help me out smash that like button i want to get over 2500 likes for today's video and without wasting any more time we start with the first story today and i want to speak about these Declan rice reports now the athletic were the first ones to break this story and the article was pretty interesting they're suggesting that we are targeting Declan rice to act as our new center back partner now this does make quite a lot of sense when you consider that a few months ago we made an official approach with Gabriel from Lille since then there's been no further updates there's been nothing new with this deal and maybe the main reason for that is due to our long-term interest in Declan Rice now I thought Rice was exceptional against us yesterday as I keep stressing every single time, he has that Chelsea DNA inside. He came up from our academy, he's been with us throughout his whole youth career. He left at around 15 to sign for West Ham, so for me, he is a Chelsea player and we could see those qualities in this game last night. You know, I was particularly impressed with his lot of different passes, you know, playing passes between the lines and, you know, just really kickstarting every single counter-attack for West Ham. For a team like us that I'm constantly stressing focuses on playing fast, transitional styles of football, you want players who can create those opportunities, that can find men further forward, that can play those types of passes. And I feel that in this area, Declan Rice definitely has the passing on point. Now, for a while I've been thinking about why did we just end our interest in Gabriel? And that's because when you use the eye test and you just see the stats too, you know, he seems like he could be the perfect central defender. Tall, physical, great aerially, great on the ground, and he can play and he can ball out. It's not too often that you get players like this for a decent price. But it seems like that may have ended due to Declan Rice. And I think one major advantage that Rice would have had over a Gabriel is his communication abilities. Now this season in particular, one of the main issues we've had defensively is that we don't necessarily have that real leader who's going to just organise the defence and tell people where to go. I think this is why Rudiger plays in Lampard's team quite a lot because out of all the defenders, he's the most vocal one. He has the most testosterone in that sense and he's willing to dictate people and tell people what to do, when and where. So I understand that. And if you're Gabriel, you know, of course, I don't think he even speaks French fully and, and I don't think he speaks English too. It could be a big struggle for him to adapt to his first season in the Premier League where we need that left-sided centre-back to constantly communicate, to tell people what to do and to organise. I don't think Gabriel would have provided that. So I can understand why maybe we've turned our attention to a Declan Rice. You guys, I'm going to keep things very real, very honest. I don't have too many bad things to say about the player. He's a very good player. Every single season, there has been a big upgrade and a big step up in his level performances. Right now for West Ham, he was comfortably their best player. And yesterday, I thought he just demonstrated and highlighted that he has the potential to play for a top 14. He moves that ball accurately. He has a left foot and a right foot too. He wins tackles in the air, on the ground. Possession regains for days and his positional game is very strong too. I can support this signing if Lampard feels like Declan Rice is the best alternative to sign for that left-sided role. I honestly believe that. I think his ability to just use both his feet is just a, a big advantage in itself. And I think his signing could reflect what we're doing so far and that's signing smart. We're signing the right players we need that's going to improve how we play. We're not just focusing on names. We're not trying to force players into do things that they aren't signed to do. We are signing players that suit how we play and will take our game to the next level. So I think Declan Rice for his price, 21 years old, knowing that he's only going to get better playing with better teammates, better coaches, better system, better tactics. I see the potential here, you guys, and I co-sign any move for him if the club feel that he's the best option to sign. Anyway, I'm going to leave this question to you guys in the comment section. How do you feel about Declan Rice? Do you feel excited by the signing? Do you think he'd be a great one? Or are you a bit skeptical? Do you think that maybe he doesn't have that ability just yet and maybe he should wait a few more years? Let me know below. We now move on to the second story and that's the latest surrounding Kurt Zuma. 
Now, this was a very interesting report. However, if you just consider the previous reports that have come out over the weeks and months, you know, it's to be believed that Kurt Zuma maybe is one of the centre backs that could possibly leave once the season ends. Now, we've seen that he's lost his place uh, during the season as it's gone on. It's not because Zuma isn't good or has any deficiencies in his game. It's because Lampard needs a particular style of partnership at the back right now. And I think that Zuma might be sacrificed for the greater good of the team. You know, we have too many players that suit playing on the right hand side and one of them has to go. In Zuma's case, Tamori's younger and obviously Lampard's worked alongside him and he has big potential. Christensen is a player that everyone's believed in for a very long time as well. And of course, Agent Rudiger has played a big part in bringing Timo Werner here. I'm sure he's going to be active in bringing Kai Havertz here too. And if you're signing two German players, you want them to really just ease into things with this team. And having Rudiger in the squad is going to help with that. So from a footballing aspect, from a managerial aspect, I can understand why Lampard might be forced to make the sacrifice. You know, it is sad. Of course, Zoom is one of my favourite defenders. You guys know that I rate him very highly. However, I'm always going to put the team first. And that means that even though I absolutely love Kurt Zuma and I think he should be starting week in, week out, if it meant that we are going to go to the next level and that sacrifice was needed, I'd have to accept it, you guys. Anyway, reports are suggesting that Paris and Germain are the club showing interest in potentially signing Zuma. Now, reports are suggesting that Thomas Tuchel likes the profile Zuma has. However, nothing formal is taking place at this point in time. So we'll see what's going to happen on that front. It does continue on. We know that there's clubs from the Premier League showing interest, most notably two major clubs, and they're believed to be Everton and Tottenham, both looking at Kurt Zuma. Now, my only concern is the valuation that we've placed on Zuma. Reports are suggesting that he could be allowed to leave for £27 million, which seems quite low in my opinion. I thought he signed a long-term deal not too long ago and uh, for a player his age who could be a French international too, who has great attributes and is a very good defender in my opinion, 27 mil seems a bit too low. If Zuma was forced to leave, I'm just hoping that he goes to a big team. I think Paris and Germain would be a great step up. Um, he can play Champions League football regularly, playing alongside your, your Mbappes, your Neymars, for a good manager in Tuchel as well, who plays a nice, attractive style of football. I think that maybe these uh, stereotypes, you know, this cognitive bias that just runs absolutely rampant in football, where, you know, it means that two people see two different things when they see the same thing. I've never understood why Zuma's technique has always been used against him. This thing where he looks awkward on the ball, I've never seen it. I'll never see it. And uh, hopefully maybe going to a new league will rebuild his reputation as well. So on that sense, you guys, that's my thoughts and opinions on the Kurt Zuma news. We now move on to the third story and we continue on with another French international and that's the latest surrounding Luca Digne. Now, I'm not trying to gas myself up a bit too much, but you know, I do feel like when it comes to videos I release where you know, I've created things like alternatives to Ben Chilwell, alternatives to centre-back positions, etc, etc. Alternatives to Eden Hazard. A lot of the players that I've mentioned end up being strong targets by this club. So, you know, I'm not trying to get too ahead of myself, but I do feel like, you know, I do provide you guys some realistic options that actually could benefit the team tactically and improve us. And Luca Digne was a player that I spoke about a few months ago. Now, reports are coming out today suggesting that, of course, you know, as we already know, Man City and us are the two clubs doing the most to try and sign Ben Gilwell. As we already know as well, Leicester City have placed a crazy valuation on Gilwell's head. They want between 60 to 70 million. Ridiculous money, way too much. And reports are stating that both clubs might be looking towards Luca Digne as that cheaper alternative to Ben. Now, Luca Digne is one of the most consistent left backs in the league. He's not really spoken about enough. And I, I like that. You know, I like players like that who are just quietly doing their job very well. I'm not really getting too much credit for that. I think that Digne is a great player. You know, in the build up phase in particular, he's very fast. His crossing's very good too. And defensively, he gets tight and tenacious. These are the things I look for. And if you're asking me, I think that maybe he's a better player compared to Ben. Dinier's had experience playing in teams that focus on, you know, parking possession their opponent's half, that focus on controlling the game in those areas too. He's played for Barcelona. He's played for Roma. He's played in the Premier League too. So I feel like right now he could be a viable alternative if we look towards him. I would definitely co-sign it. I think he is a very good player who's ready to go back to the top again. 
I'm still staying with my guy in Tagliafico. For me, Tagliafico is just a no-brainer at this point. I would just sign him right now. There's public knowledge that he will be leaving Ajax at the end of the season. So I guess it's okay to explore other opportunities first before we actually go down to who the final players are going to be. But I'm still hoping it's going to be Tagliafico. For me, out of all the left-back targets, he's the best one. And he comes at the best price too. So let's see what happens there. How do you guys feel about Luca Digne? Do you think he could be the one? Do you think he could take this team to a different level? Let me know below. And to end things, you guys, we end with the Kepa news. And that's that we are looking at two alternatives to Kepa. Ariola and Mike Magnon from Lille. And uh, it doesn't surprise me whatsoever. These reports are coming out from France. And at this point in time, they are suggesting that Paris Saint-Germain are going to sell Ariola once his loan spell at Real Madrid does end. And Lille are interested in accepting offers for Mike as long as they come in in the first place. So how I take this news is that these goalkeepers, if signed, would act as competition for Kepler. And this could be smart in the long term. You know, ideally, I'd imagine the club would love to sign an old black and just spend big. But realistically, that's not the most responsible thing to do during times like this. We're already spending big on other areas. And I guess final positions like that to really just like complete this team could be done for the following seasons and those following windows. So in that sense, if you were to sign an Ariola or a Mike, there would be quality competition, quality short-term competition that would force Kepa to have to step up, have to improve, get better with his concentration, his decision-making, etc, etc. And most importantly, they have the ability to command the books, play out from the back, and they come for very realistic and economical prices. After Kepa's performances, it doesn't surprise me that Lampard is still looking for a goalkeeper because every great team has a great goalkeeper. Every single great team has one. The stats are proving that Kepa has been one, probably the worst keeper by a big distance this season. And as I've been saying, it feels like when teams have an opportunity on goal, Kepa might as well not be in goal because he doesn't do anything to rectify the situation and give us a fighting chance to get back on top. So I still don't understand why we spent so much money on Kepa in the first place to offer him a six year deal to give him 200,000 per week wages to spend 72 million pounds to make him the world record price for a goalkeeper it's crazy it's mad and you know we could pay the price for that so on that note i'm gonna wrap things up and keep things moving there is gonna be a talking points video later out today you guys so make sure you stay tuned for that and on that note i'm nini fc this is blue lion cv i'll catch you man later with another video